and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Black can be a very tricky colour to use, especially when you have a black object against a dark blackish background. I paint a lot of animal commissions and often I have to find colour in my reference photos that simply isn't there. This week I'm going to show you how I did exactly that with this black terrier painting. Let's get into the time lapse video and I will talk about how I approach this painting and my process as we go along. In the original photo, which I can't show you, I'm sorry as I don't have permission from the owners, the dog was sat on their owner's lap in front of a black jumper. The result was the dog was exactly the same colour and value as the background. The only relief was its white areas. This doesn't mean that a reference photo is no good to use simply because it's very dark. It just puts the onus on the artist to find colour in their blacks. And why shouldn't we depart from the photo anyway? After all, it is a painting. There are many ways to paint a black object, but if you understand the colours on your palette, it will make it simpler. Remember that ivory black has a blue leaning and it is not as cool as ultramarine. Blue is the coolest colour on the colour wheel and often artists forget about this fact when they reach for their black. Forget about the fact you are looking at a dog and you know it to be black. Instead, look at it in terms of just colours, values, temperatures and shapes. If it helps to abstract it a little, turn it upside down. Then ask yourself, what colours can I see in my darkest darks? Are the colours that I am seeing warm or cool? What is the value of this colour? If it helps, hold a grey card up to your reference photo as this will make it easier to see the colour. In the dog's fur, I could see a blue black, a red black, a purple black and also a yellow black. All the primary colours were present. As I knew the light was coming across from this side, it was very simple to adjust the value in this area without it looking odd. When you adjust your reference photos, take your cue from what the light is doing if it is obvious. Here it was. But what if you really cannot see any colour at all because the light is very flat? Firstly, identify the temperature of the area. Is it warm or is it cool? If you are not sure, hold a grey card up to it and this will help you. If it is warm, you have the option of introducing any of these colours into your blacks. If it is cool, you can introduce any of these colours. Once you have decided which colour you wish to introduce, you have the option to push the colour saturation as well. Remember though, this is in the context of not adjusting the value, unless it aids the composition and not adjusting the temperature. The palette I used for this painting was yellow ochre light, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, burnt umber, ivory black, ultramarine deep and titanium zinc white. Notice I still have black on my palette, but I am not using it as my coolest colour. I've placed it before my blue to give me that visual reminder that blue is cooler. I'm going to mix up a couple of extra colours that will help me. A rich black that will be an even split of burnt umber and ultramarine and a warm black of alizarin crimson and ivory black. I'm also going to mix up an orange of cadmium red and yellow ochre light. The first layer is like a scumbling layer. I'm just getting a bit of paint on that paper to make it easier for myself to judge colour. Everything is relative to what is next to it, so it is a lot easier to judge your colours if you've got the whole area covered. I think I did actually use a bit of medium in that paint on the first layer, although I probably wouldn't do that now. I painted this one at the beginning of December and since that date I have been experimenting with zero medium. The effect of using less medium is that now I tend to go in with stronger colour and value on my first layer, so there would be less to do on layer two. As an artist, I'm always trying to continually grow. I watch the process of lots of other artists as I'm always looking for perhaps a better way to do things. I think it's always good to strive to be better than your last painting. Even if it's just by 1%, it all adds up over time. I read a book by Richard Smid called Alla Prima, Everything I Know About Painting. 
It's very good. Get hold of a copy if you can. It took me four years to get hold of my copy because import duty to the UK was so horrific. Anyway, he suggested using paint straight out of the tube as it behaves itself better. I have to say I have found that to be correct. So even though I have used some here, I would say if you struggle with issues of control with your paint, then leave the linseed oil out of your process. I'll explain the colour harmonies I have used as I go back over this painting for my second layer, because it is quite simple. I paint on consecutive days. If the painting was on canvas board, it would still be wet, but as this was on paper and there is a certain amount of absorption, it's quite dry. That's just the nature of painting on paper. For a painting to look realistic, it needs to have both warm and cool tones in it. So when you lay a warm tone down, the area you lay next to it needs to not be as warm. If I start with this area here, this is my warmest black with the addition of alizarin crimson in my ivory black. Either side, I have then placed my rich black, but with a heavier lean towards my blue. Remember black is warmer than blue. So with the addition of red, this area is going to feel warmer. On this side, I can then go cooler still with a mixture of purple plus white in my rich black. The purple is made up of alizarin crimson plus ultramarine. White is a cooler colour too, so the addition of a lighter purple to my rich black mix is enough to push it even cooler than this section here. On the other side, you'll notice a little of my red black before I moved straight to ivory black plus yellow ochre light and white. Notice how warm that looks in comparison to that purple. For the rest of the face, I shift my colours between black red, black, black plus yellow, rich black of ultramarine deep plus burnt umber, purple and blue. I am lightening with white where necessary to make sure my values are correct. If I lay these colours out on a sliding scale, you'll see how they shift from warm on one side to cool on the other. Look at where my black sits on this scale. If there's one thing that you take away from this video, ivory black is not the coolest colour on your palette. For my white areas, I have added a little yellow ochre light to warm it up, but I have laid it next to a cool purple of the same value either side. This makes my white areas seem warmer and really gives the sense that the sun is shining on that chest area. The white behaves the same as the darks, there is colour in it, so always try to add some. I find the colour combination of yellow with purple usually works. This is because they are complementary colours and one makes the other sing. For the background, I have used a combination of ivory black plus yellow ochre light plus a bit of white in the lighter areas. Because ivory black has a blue leaning, the addition of yellow will give it a green hue. Notice also that the green and blue are next to each other on the colour wheel, so will harmonise well together. I've used that paint very thinly on that background too, which allows that wash that I covered my paper with to show through. The wash was Gamsol plus raw sienna. If you are trying to create a painting with a sunny glow, this is a good one to use. The brushes that I use are a combination of round, flat and coma brushes. The flat ones are by Artmaster and I use these ones as my workhorses. I like them quite wrecked without the sharp edges. I'm always a bit disappointed when they go in the bin and I have to start with a new one as the strokes are a bit too hard for me. It takes me a good month before I've worn them in. The long handle brushes are by Rosemary & Co. These are called long haired combers and they are great for laying wet paint on wet paint. They also give a good fur effect without having to try too hard. I think the round brushes are pro art. I use those ones for the eyes. There are lots of ways to paint black objects, but the most important thing is to try to find the colour in your blacks, making sure you have a mixture of warm and cool colours. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and found it useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.